Hey folks, welcome back. Um, you'll have to pardon the noise in the background. Uh, wind's coming down out of the north again, blowing some lovely pollen my way. <coughs> and uh, it loves to beat against the, uh, the garage door. Makes all kinds of uh, lovely racket. Um, hey, we're going to prep this for uh, grain filling today. Um, I'm just using a straight one-to-one -one, uh, um, ratio of epoxy to resin and the hardener. Just like it says to on the box, I'm not going to thin it down or anything. Um, but the first thing that I want to do is there are some shiny areas here um, on the back, up around the edge, back where it's kind of been polished from playing. And my concern about that is um, if there's uh, any kind of oils or sweat or anything on there. Um, the other concern I have is that we have all these little holes, uh, the pore holes on here, and I don't want anything to be in those little holes. Um, so we're doing the old uh, naphtha toothbrush kind of trick. Um, just trying to get anything out of there um, that might be caught. Um, a couple different ways you can get naphtha. Uh, N-A-P-H-T-H-A. Naphtha. Um, you can get it as lighter fluid. Um, you can get it as, uh, if you're lucky, uh, you can get it as uh, just straight naphtha from a paint supply house or something like that. You can also get it as Coleman fuel, uh, uh, also called white gas. Um, those are all those are all naphtha. So get it wherever you need it, uh, wherever you can. Um, doesn't attack nitro. Um, I use it for just general purpose cleaning. Just trying to get anything out of there that I can. This is exciting, yes? No. Um, I should probably say this at the beginning and the end of every video I make. Um, this is the way I do this. There are as many different ways to do these things in a lot of cases um, as there are, you know, specks of sand on the beach. Um, so my way is, is definitely not the definitive way. Um, there are um, other procedures and ways that you can do this and other materials that you can do um, that are both better and probably worse. Um, you need to figure out what it is that you are comfortable with um, and are skilled at doing. Um, and you need to operate within whatever your comfort zone is. Um, so, yeah, there's my sagely old world advice. Um, so, hey, uh, let's get grain filling. Uh, all right, not terribly uh, complicated stuff. I'm not going to mix a whole huge batch at a time. because uh, it will uh, harden up. You 
kind of shoot yourself in the foot at that point. Uh, equal parts of the uh, resin and the hardener. It's going to be a little thicker than I like it. Um, but that's just the, it's just the way it is here today. Um, it's a little chilly. It was beautiful yesterday. It was 80 yesterday. It's supposed to be 65 today. So, just giving it a good mix. Um, I usually mix on something just like a a, a paper plate or a saucer or something like that. Um, just because I'm prone to make a mess, and uh, there can be issues if you are making a great mess with epoxy, as you can imagine. Um, um, I'm just using a uh, a plane, just this knife um, to kind of spread things out with, get it from here to here, um, and then I use um, just playing cards. Um, I always seem to have a deck of playing cards that's missing one or more and so it's fairly straightforward to um, have a deck you know have 52 or 54 or 55 um, nice little spreaders um, at my disposal um, I'm kinda going at an angle because I want it to get in the grain in all those little holes I'm going to go one way and then I'm going to go the other way and then I'm going to wipe up any drips that I've got up along the edge here because again the whole purpose is to get this epoxy down into the little holes all right so uh, here we are um, the first coat of uh, z epoxy is on uh, this is going to dry for about 30 minutes uh, and then I'm going to come back with a uh, with a blade a razor blade um, and uh, we're going to clean the excess off of the top. Again, I'm not wanting to build up coats on this. Uh, what I'm wanting to do is to fill in holes. Um, so we'll scrape that uh, off here in about 30 minutes or so. Right now I'm just trying to clean up where the uh, Z-Poxy has gotten over into uh, control cavities and such and uh, come down along the edge uh, over the side because I got to do the sides too but I want to do the sides on my schedule not on this schedule so <coughs> so uh, there we are half hour we'll do that these are the blades that I'm using um, they're, um, they're actually for cutting mats photo mats and I bought I don't know, a couple of gross of them years ago and just been using them up one by one ever since. I take a file and I round the edge off and then what I'm going to do is we'll come in and we'll drag across here to just scrape the top level of the epoxy off. Uh, so, uh, half hour break, let's have some coffee. Alright, uh, giving it about 45 minutes or so. Um, and uh, I just got a paper towel with some alcohol on it. And what I'm doing now is I'm dragging this, this uh, blade
across the guitar, just getting off this excess uh, z epoxy that I'm not going to use anyways. This will all have to be sanded off. And it's just much easier to do it like this. Because um, sand is a mess anyways. Plus this will maybe push some epoxy down into the pores that may have just been kind of sitting on the edge. Alright, so now I'm just going to go around the edge here. If there's anything that's kind of hanging off. I'll get that off, especially over on this end where I kind of pulled it over. And uh, now we let it sit. We'll let it sit for a day. You can see where I've pulled it off. And there's some areas where it looks like it's been pulled in more than others. So tomorrow, <coughs> 300 grit or so, we will. Um, We'll start sanding this off, get it sanded flat, and then we'll see where the z epoxy has filled in a bunch of the little holes. And then we'll have to do it once, and eh, maybe twice again. Um, so, a slow process, um, but one that will pay off um, when we go to fill this with uh, paint and uh, we have a nice flat surface um, to work from. Uh, that'll be really nice. Now, not only do we have to do uh, the back, but we've got to do the sides as well. The top, the neck, they look fine. Uh, we're not going to mess with those. Um, so, it continues. Check back, folks. <sighs> Welcome back, folks. Um, the crud, she'd still be with us. <coughs> but I'm alive. So that's a start. That's what they say. Um, all right. Z epoxy's dried overnight. Probably created a little more work for myself than I uh, should have, just because it was um, it was cold um, when I mixed it up, um, and so I don't think it got down into the pores as much as it could have. You can see um, where I've peeled it off um, with the uh, straight edge, um, so. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, unfamiliar with creating more work for myself. Um, so uh, today uh, we're going to open the garage door, um, set the sanding station up kind of next to the door, try to keep as much dust out of here as I can. We're going to sand this down, um, uh, try to get most of it off, and hopefully what we'll see when we're done is... Um, uh, uh, most of this will be gone, and you'll just see little spots where the z epoxy has filled the grain. Um, we're also going to see indentations because I can see already there's some areas that really didn't take it. Um, so we'll put as many coats on here as we have to to get it flat, and then we'll move on to the side. So, uh, time for a different white balance because uh, now we're going to have sunshine and wind in here. So, stand by. <laughs> 